Hello, my name is Brian and welcome to Overland Calling. I do adventure travel, overlanding, car camping, whatever you want to call it. Um, I travel all over the United States working out of my Jeep Gladiator as my mobile office. And how am I able to do this? The answer is pretty simple. Right there on top of the tent is my Starlink Mini because there is absolutely no cell phone reception here. I made a Starlink Mini video with uh, different ways to power the Starlink Mini. And I had a lot of other questions come up from viewers. So that's what this video is. It's a deep dive into some real world testing on questions that people had. And I made a list. So those questions that we're gonna be covering today are, how does the Starlink Mini work with tree cover? Cloud cover, how is it with open skies? In motion testing, using the Starlink Mini for work, email, video meetings, Wi-Fi calling, things like that. Do 12 volt, 100 watt, USB-C PD adapters really hold up over long periods of time? Different speeds that the Starlink Mini has in different areas in the United States. And a bonus one, why I think speed tests aren't nearly as useful. I know saying that speed tests aren't very useful is pretty controversial since every Starlink Mini video has got a speed test going on it. But stick around to the end. I think you'll figure out why. I travel around in all kinds of different environments, do a lot of camping. And with that, I get to really put gear to the test. I'm not just here to sell you crap. Now I'll put affiliate links on some of the stuff and I truly do appreciate it if you choose to use those links. But that's not what this is about. This is about me testing things out and helping you make a better decision to see if it's gonna be a good fit for you. Now I've managed to clone myself so we're going to be able to check in with different Brian's across the United States. I'm just kidding. I've been filming this video over the course of a 2000 mile, 14 day plus road trip, but we're going to have some fun and pretend that I've got a bunch of cloned me's running around. All right, there's a lot to get to. So let's get to it. First up, how does the Starlink mini work with tree cover? As your host, Wyoming, Brian, I'll tell you right now, the tree cover I have right now, it is doing absolutely fantastic. I was a little sketchy on if this spot would work or not. Let's take a walk over and get Starlink Mini's view. So this is roughly Starlink Mini's view of the sky. It is actually pretty darn open. There is, of course, you know, the giant rock pinnacles over there and a couple trees, but it's been working fantastic. But don't just take it from me. I were Brian. How's it been working for you? I had to stop during the week, do some work. I figured that was a great opportunity to test out the Starlink Mini in the wild, kind of see how it does when it really has to pull through. With Starlink Mini with tree cover? Well, it works great until it doesn't. So it'll be going great for five or 10 minutes and then signal will drop. It'll come back up in, I don't know, maybe five, 10 seconds. Um, and it, then it keeps going. Now, if you're watching video, no problem. You'll be able to build up a memory buffer in your device. You probably never even know it happens. If you're doing Wi-Fi calling or you're doing a Teams meeting, video conference call, then you're done. So I got my mini there and way over there is camp, which Wi-Fi hasn't been a problem at all running over 50 feet away from my computer, devices, all that good stuff. Even up in the tent, my iPad and iPhone were able to get re Wi-Fi reception. The problem has been that view of the sky that I've got. Well, thank you, Iowa Brian. I'm sorry those trees were giving you such a hard time, but I've got a little trick to be able to tell how well the Starlink Mini is gonna work in tree cover. Stick through to the end and I'll tell you all about it. Also, I noticed you mentioned Wi-Fi was working 50 feet away. Well, ah, that was another one of the most asked questions. So how well does the Wi-Fi work on the Starlink Mini? Now, 50 feet away, sure, no problem. But Iowa Brian, I noticed you didn't have any obstructions or anything in between you and the Wi-Fi signal. I'm kind of wondering like how it would work out in the wilderness because we got these things called trees here that might mess up the reception. And you know what? Let's go test it out. All the way down that embankment, 
where I want to hang out and work, right by the stream, that's pretty good distance away from where I got the Starlink Mini on top of my tent. How about, let's just go check it out. Don't laugh too much at my old butt crawling down this steep embankment. I'm risking my life for you, YouTube. It's all for YouTube testing right here. That, and I really want to work by a stream. Hey, don't laugh. This is steep. I know it doesn't look like it on camera, but it's pretty darn steep. All right. I really don't think this is gonna work. I think it's a bit much because I'm staring at nothing but earth and trees. But let's give it a shot. So I've got my, my favorite YouTube channel, Overland Calling up right there. Let's see if we can play a video. Doing a series dedicated to trail guides and kind of just ways for people to check to see if the trail is okay for their vehicle. Oh, Go on, get a little information. That's pretty cool. That's it it's just trails. I run trails. I show you what's Oh, happening. it's one of my favorite you're videos. I'm just gonna coffee, check it out. Me cook I'll food. be back with you shortly. Watching me do While you're waiting for me to finish the video, uh, South Dakota, Brian, why don't you tell Tell us how Starlink Mini was working for you. How's the connection in open skies with light cloud cover? Well, pretty dang good. I didn't get one single ping drop or signal loss or anything in 30, 45 minutes. And yeah, I mean, it's just operating solid. Thank you very much, South Dakota Brian. And you know what? Out here in Wyoming, I've had a fair amount of clouds and rain as well. And you know what? In moderate rain, I haven't noticed any sort of drops or anything like that. Now, I haven't tested it in like super heavy thunderstorms or anything like that. I'm going to imagine that that's probably going to cause some signal loss. But what I've had so far, light rain and cloud cover, been working like a champ. Now, on to the next one. How does Starlink Mini work in motion. Well, South Dakota Brian, can you help us out with that? Don't laugh too hard, but I got to make some way to test out Starlink Mini in the uh, for in motion use. So I got a kneeling pad. I'm going to use that to set it on. I got to cut it out, make it a little bit thinner. Got some straps to attach it. Tools required. One knife that can cut through foam. All right, you want to talk janky? This is janky. Got these straps. I don't know what they're going to do interference wise, um, but I got to hold it in somehow. And this is what I could pick up at Ace. And hey, Matt, thank you for the kneeling pad. Uh, wish me luck. Oh, all right, folks. It may not look pretty, but that sucker works. Heck yeah. All right, time to hit the trail. See how it does actually moving. We're gonna see if this thing actually works in motion. Watch my buddy Fletch from All Things Overland. Well, we have been watching this video for, it's like 12 minutes straight, zero drops, no issues. I'm gonna say, now, yeah, prelim, trail test, open skies is working just fine. Starlink mini testing. Got it mounted right up here. I do have the roof open because it's a pretty nice day. And uh, yeah, Pandora was working like a champ. Now Pan Pandora does buffer so it can drop signal, pick it back up and you'll never know. So what I did was I made a, made a phone call home and checked in over Wi-Fi calling. And you know what? It worked great for about five minutes and then the call dropped. I mean, I'm not shocked. I'm going through trees, I'm changing angles, I'm turning directions and like, you know, you name it. And I mean, I've got these things called, you know, I don't know if that's a mountain, but it's a big old hill. All right, we're gonna crank up the tunes and roll. Let's see what we got here.
Thank you very much, South Dakota Brian. No offense, but I don't think we're going to be putting Amazon links or anything like that for that mount system you built. It's a little janky. But hey, you got the job done and it held up for over a thousand miles. So bam, good job. And I hope you weren't watching too much of that video while you're out there driving the trails. Okay, now, nobody actually asked me this next question, but it's a question that I had above everything else. And it was, how does Starlink Mini work when you're trying to work? Like, is it gonna be able to handle email? Well, the answer to that, yes, double thumbs up. Rocked emails all day long. How about file uploads? You know what, pretty darn good. I uploaded a YouTube video last night in a rainstorm. How about video meetings and Wi-Fi calling? Well, up and down. Make sure you have a stable connection with a clear view of the sky. Next up, how does it work with those 12 volt cigarette style USB 100 watt adapters? Specifically the ones I showed in my videos these guys right here. Well, I can answer the in motion part. Whenever you've got them plugged into your car's cigarette lighter, it works pretty dang good. One thing I did notice though, is that you're gonna have some heat build up. So when, I, when it was cold and I was running my heat, that sucker warmed up pretty darn warm. And I think that might cause issues long-term. But let's check and see about like eight hours plugged into a power station or a power bank or something like that. Iowa Brian, I hear you did some testing on that. How'd the results turn out for you? It's given me a great opportunity to test out these two 12 volt plugs here. The Watobus and what was this, the Rexing? Both worked just fine. Ran them for eight hours straight, no issues. It gets a little warm. It hasn't been super hot here. It's been in the, I don't know, I'd say maybe high 70s, low 80s. They haven't been getting particularly warm. Thank you, Iowa Brian. And yeah, now I think you're right. Those cooler temps, I think caused it to actually work a little bit better than maybe we'd see if we were in a hot environment where you might get reboots or something like that. Nobody actually asked me about my 12 to 36 volt uh, converter that I custom built, but you know what? I know I'm biased, but I've had it plugged in here now for what, three days straight? I do put the Starlink Mini to sleep at night, but I haven't been unplugging it or turning it off. And I'll tell you what, it works pretty dang good. I haven't had a single issue. So that's gonna be my preferred method when I'm camping. Then I use the 12 volt cigarette style adapter when I'm driving. If you wanna watch any of the power videos for the 12 volt adapters, USB-C, 100 watt cord, um, or um, rough explanation of how I did that 12 to 36 volt uh, converter. Um, I'll post a link in the end screen here so you'll be able to check out those videos. Now, what's up next? I made a list because my memory sucks. Ah, yes, speed tests across various areas in the United States. I'll take this one because I've talked to all the other Brian's out there and I can say Ohio, straight up good. I was getting 100. 100 plus down and in the 20 range up. Iowa, when I wasn't dealing with tree cover, I was still getting those great speeds. Uh, South Dakota, again, surprising, um, 100 plus great speeds. Wyoming, 100 plus great speeds. And that brings me to my last one. Why do I think speed tests aren't very useful? Well. That's because for what I need, what I really need Starlink to work is video conference calls and Wi-Fi calling. And speed tests only gives you a short little segment of time. Plus it eats up that data on your plan. What I've started using is actually the statistics screen. Let me see if I can show it to you. Instead of speed test, I go right here to statistics and then that tells me if I've got any signal drops or if I've got any latency issues. 
And that's why I think that speed test isn't a good indicator if you're going to be, you know, doing remote work on the road where you've got to do meetings and stuff like that. Speed test, for me, it performed outstanding no matter where I've been at until it goes behind the obstruction and then it drops to zilch. So for me, statistics is where you go to check and see if you're going to be able to work from a location. Because I'm not going to lie, this one was a little sketchy. I rolled up here and I'm like, man, that's some obstructed sky. I mean, I've got freaking rock formations blocking the northern sky. Like, that's some serious obstructions there, folks. Plus, I got these tall trees coming up on either side. But you know what? I gave it a good 30 minutes of testing here, noticed I had zero drops, and I said, oh buddy, we got us an epic campsite for the week. This is my happy place while working. So anyway, thank you for dealing with all of my antics and you know the gold cloning thing and all that good stuff. I hope this video helped you out. And if you enjoy content like this or if you found any of this information useful, do me a favor, hit that like button. Subscribe, blah, 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 all that other good stuff if you want to. Um, I am going to do more Starlink videos. As long as people keep having questions, I'll keep answering them. So if there's anything I didn't cover, hey, leave me a comment below. And I guarantee I will do my best to either answer you in the comments. And if it's something that takes a little more explanation, I'll make it your very own video. All right. Thank you very much. And until next time, enjoy the ride.